This is the last lesson in the Psychology of Relationships course. In this lesson, you will learn about the attachment explanation of parasocial relationships. The attachment explanation of parasocial relationships says that such relationships follow the same attachment pattern that other relationships do. For example, proximity seeking, which is wanting to be close to the attachment figure. And using the attachment figure as a secure base and protesting when you're separated from them. People with insecure resistant attachment are most likely to form parasocial relationships. They look to have unfulfilled needs met by celebrity, and this avoids the chance of rejection from a two-sided relationship. People with an insecure avoidant attachment are least likely to form a parasocial relationship. They are unwilling to form relationships of any type, real or parasocial. So what evidence is there for the attachment explanation of parasocial relationships? Cole and Neitz found that people were more likely to form parasocial bonds if they had an insecure resistant attachment type. This may be to satisfy their unmet emotional needs. Is there any other evidence? Cohen investigated 381 participants' reactions to the thought of their favourite TV characters being taken off air. Many of them said that they would have feelings of sadness and loneliness if this happened. Their reactions were linked to the intensity of their parasocial relationships and their attachment style. Those with insecure resistant attachment types believed that it would affect them the most. So those with insecure resistant attachment are more likely to have intense parasocial relationships? Yes, McCutcheon found that people with insecure attachments are more likely to agree with stalking and obsessive behaviour towards celebrities. Are there any issues with the theory? There are many different reasons why people follow celebrities, such as a celebrity being popular with peers. Therefore, the attachment explanation of parasocial relationships is reductionist. Now try these five multiple choice questions to see how much you've learnt. Question one, why are we attracted to certain people according to the evolutionary theory of relationships? A, we hold similar values to them. B, they look like they will give us healthy, successful children. Or C, they live close to us. Pause here if you need time to think. The answer is B. The evolutionary explanation of relationships says that we have evolved particular partner preferences and certain ways of behaving in order to improve our reproductive success, i.e. our ability to have healthy, successful children. Question two. On a first date, what should you reveal about yourself? A, as little as possible. It is risky to reveal too much about yourself too quickly. B, as much as possible to increase intimacy. Or C, as much as the other person reveals, so there is a balance of self-disclosure. Pause here if you need time to think. The answer is C. There needs to be a balance of self-disclosure, which means that both partners need to reveal personal information at the same level of intimacy. However, on a first date, it is best to stick to low risk information about yourself, such as where you work or how many siblings you have. Question three, what theory says that people want to maximize their rewards in a relationship? A, social exchange theory, B, equity theory, or C, the investment model? The answer is A. Social exchange theory says we want to maximise the rewards and minimise the costs in a relationship. Rewards might include companionship, sex and being cared for. Costs might include financial investments, effort and time. In contrast, equity theory says that people feel happier in relationships where they feel that what they are putting into a relationship is roughly equal to what they are getting out of it. The investment model relates to why people stay in relationships. People are more likely to stay in a relationship based on a number of factors. Satisfaction level, quality of alternatives, 
investment size and commitment level. Question four. What happens in the intrapsychic phase of Duck's model of relationship breakdown? A, a person debates to themselves whether they should continue their relationship. B, a person talks to their partner about their concerns. Or C, a person talks to friends and family about their relationship worries. Pause here if you need to. The answer is A. According to Duck's model of relationship breakdown, the intrapsychic phase is when a person thinks about whether they want a relationship to continue. They might consider the negative aspects of the relationship, but they usually don't share their thoughts with others. Question five, what is a parasocial relationship? A, an online relationship. B, a one-sided relationship where the other person doesn't usually know you. Or C, a relationship based on equality. The answer is B. Parasocial relationships are one-sided relationships in which one person is usually unaware of the existence of the other. For example, people may form parasocial relationships with celebrities. Well done. You have completed this module on the psychology of relationships.